Welcome to the second tutorial of the Getting Started tutorial series of the SimScale platform. In the next few minutes, we will carry out a complete engineering simulation using SimScale. To give you an impression on what we will work, see here the results of the simulation that we will carry out. It's about uh, the water flow through a pipe junction. So here on the left, water is coming in, from the top, water is coming in, and the two flows merge. Um, in the middle and then the flow is going out on the right. So how to set up such a simulation using the SimScale platform? Let's get started. SimScale works completely via a web browser, so there is no need for any local installation or plugins whatsoever. We simply go to simscale.com, click on the login button, log in via our credentials and we're good to go. Here we can see the tutorial project only containing the CAD model that we have imported from the SimScale documentation. To visualize the CAD model, we switch to the Mesh Creator, click on the tree item of the CAD model, and it is automatically loaded in 3D in the viewer. Please note that this is the actual fluid flow volume inside the pipe and not the actual pipe CAD model itself. So let's create a mesh for um, the CFD analysis. Um, we click on Mesh Geometry, which automatically creates a new mesh with the default operation. Um, we're going to rename that uh, operation to Hex Dominant because we will use a Hex Dominant meshing um, operation to create the mesh, which is called Automatic Snappy Hex Mesh for Internal Flow. We choose the finest to moderate. We will use a four-core machine to carry out um, the meshing process. And last but not least, we choose the physical walls of the flow domain um, and assign it to this mesh operation to make sure that refined layers are generated uh, close to these walls to later resolve the viscous boundary layer that um, will evolve in the flow domain. The, in the lower left, we can see the job status box that keeps us updated on the progress of this mesh operation. Once the mesh operation is um, completed, the mesh is um, loaded automatically in the viewer and we can see that um, this hex dominant, um, that the hex dominant mesh has been created. We can now also um, check on the details of this mesh, for example, um, review the layers, the refined boundary layer cells um, in more detail. Um, so we can see them at, at the outlets and at the inlets, or at the outlet and um, the two inlets. And we will also use a mesh clip mechanism to have a look uh, inside of the volume mesh to check if everything is okay also in there. Especially at corners, it's interesting if um, the refined layers, the refined cells, are also um, at the corners, that looks good. So let's move on to set up the actual simulation after having created the mesh. To set up the actual simulation, we switch to the Simulation Designer tab. We click on, new, on the new simulation button, give it an, a meaningful name, and the new simulation appears on the left in the tree. The first step in each simulation setup on SimScale is to choose the actual analysis type that I want to carry out. In our case, since we're dealing with a, um, a low velocity water flow, we um, choose an incompressible flow simulation, being laminar, steady state, and we're going to use a simple algorithm for the pressure velocity coupling. Saving the analysis type automatically expands the tree on the left with all items that I need to define to complete the simulation setup. The red icon means I have to define something, the blue icons are um, optional, and the green icons are already defined. Let's first choose the domain. We choose the mesh we just generated, which automatically loads the mesh into the viewer for the further setup. To make our lives easier later um, when assigning boundary condition, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to group the faces of our flow domain together. The first um, face set, um, which actually consists out of one face, is this inlet that I call pipe inlet 1. The second one is uh, the one here on the top, which um, I call pipe inlet 2. The third one is um, at the end, the outlet, which I call pipe outlet. 
and the rest of the faces are going to group together as being the walls. So I call this um, uh, face set um, pipe walls. And I can see all these four face sets on the topological entity sets of my domain tree item. So let's move on. Under model, I'm going to choose the kinematic viscosity of water at um, 20 degrees Celsius. The next relevant tree item are the initial conditions. I can see that I could define pressure and velocity initial conditions, but I leave them as they are. The most interesting part of the simulation setup is the boundary condition assignment. Um, since we're dealing with the laminar incompressible flow simulation, there are only pressure and velocity as physical quantities that need to be defined. First, I'm going to set up um, a velocity inlet boundary condition for the inlet one. So I choose the fixed value boundary condition type um, in negative z direction, and I assign the face set um, being pipe inlet one that I just uh, created a few seconds ago. And here you can see that the um, setup of face sets really um, helps to um, or simplifies the process of setting up boundary conditions. The second boundary condition is um, for the second inlet. So again, I'm going to choose a fixed value boundary condition for the velocity at this inlet. Um, I check on the coordinate system being in uh, negative epsilon direction. I choose the pipe inlet 2 face set and the boundary condition gets green. The third velocity boundary condition is for the outlet. So I call it U outlet. Um, I set um, the gradient to zero. So the velocity is not allowed to change um, across the outlet phase. The last velocity boundary condition is for the physical walls. I choose a fixed value um, with uh, the velocity zero. I assign the pipe walls face it, which basically defines um, a no-slip wall boundary condition at the walls. And I can see now I have defined the velocity for all um, yeah, faces of the flow domain. Same goes for pressure. The first um, pressure boundary condition is for both inlets and um, the walls, um, setting the gradient to zero. And the second pressure boundary condition um, for the outlet is a fixed value boundary condition with zero since we're running an incompressible analysis and I assign this boundary condition to the facet pipe outlet. The boundary condition overview shows that I have defined four velocity boundary condition and two pressure boundary conditions. So let's move on. I won't use any advanced concepts um, and I also won't change any, anything regarding the numerics. In simulation control, I um, can control the write settings and the time step length of my simulation. Um, I will use an 8-core machine um, and I save these settings. And um, I could now define some result control items, um, but um, that's uh, nothing for this tutorial. So let's move on to the last step to create an actual simulation run. We check the simulation. It seems to be fine. And so we can um, create a simulation run using, these, um, using this simulation setup. A run is basically a snapshot of the simulation setup that I used. I can see that this one is ready to run and the settings of my simulation are now saved. So uh, I can later check on how exactly these results were generated. Clicking on the start button kicks off my simulation run in the remote computing center and the job status box in the lower left keeps me updated um, on the progress of my simulation. Um, the results of the simulation, whenever they are present, um, get uh, transferred back in real time. So I get an info about the um, behavior of the residuals. I can um, track the progress um, and thereby um, yeah, check on how my simulation is doing. Once the simulation run is finished, I can post-process the final results using the post-processor tab. I can see that solution fields um, is available and by clicking on it, I can load the post-processing environment and the data set is automatically um, loaded into it. The initial view is um, without a color, um, but you can already interact with it in 3D, like in, in the pre-processing viewers. Um, let's first make sure that we switch to the last time step. We uh, computed um, until the thousandth time step, so we switch to that. And we will um, visualize the pressure field first. So we can see from the outside that the um, pressure um, decreases uh, across the pipe, which we would expect, and we can also visualize the velocity. And since we have a no-slip wall at the outside um, of the pipe, um, 
for sure there is not much visible, so we can see everything is blue, meaning um, no velocity at all. So let's uh, create a clip visualization. So we choose the clip filter, apply this filter to basically um, yeah, have a look inside the result field. We hide the initial result and we visualize the velocity field, so the magnitude of the velocity um, via this clip view. Let's toggle the color scale and on the clip uh, view we can see how the velocity is behaving inside the pipe. We can see the blockage that is uh, generated by the incoming flow from the top, etc. We could dive into more detail right now. But um, let's first generate a screenshot of this um, result visualization and uh, let's move on to generate a report, which is the last step of this tutorial. So we switch to the report tree icon. We um, give, create a new report, give it a meaningful name, decide on which assets um, we want to uh, see in the report that SimScale will automatically create for us. And then we're um, going to get a PDF uh, containing all the settings of the simulation um, that I ran and also some um, automatically created uh, result visualization. And last but not least, the post processor screenshot. This concludes the second tutorial of the Getting Started tutorial series of the SimScale platform. Make sure you check out the others and happy simulating!